This crepe is a signature at the Eddy in New York. It's one of the many carefully crafted dishes by executive chef Jeremy Salomon and his team. Chef Jeremy decided he wanted to be a chef when he was just nine years old, and today he's getting recognized beyond the meals that he serves. Jeremy is an openly gay chef, encouraging all members of his team to be comfortable in the kitchen. One in 10 LGBT employees have left a job because the environment was unwelcoming. At the Eddy, Chef Jeremy wants his kitchen to be inclusive for all chefs, especially LGBTQ people. I was never out in other kitchens. You know, you kind of hear all these kind of like nasty things being said about gay people um, and homophobia, and it, it slips out. Coming up, our team shares how he's trying to change the kitchen culture. Business Insider today starts now. Tesla announced it delivered fewer new vehicles than expected in the first quarter of 2019. The company said 63,000 new vehicles were delivered, which is 31% less than the previous quarter. Analysts estimated Tesla would deliver 10,000 more new vehicles than it actually did. The company said it encountered problems delivering its fleet overseas. But the drop in deliveries could also indicate there's less demand for Tesla in the U.S. Tesla said it plans to deliver between 360 and 400,000 vehicles this year. A boycott is growing after the country of Brunei enacted a law that punishes sex between men with stoning to death. Hollywood heavyweights, including George Clooney and Ellen DeGeneres, are calling on people to boycott hotels in the Dorchester Collection, which are owned by the Sultan of Brunei. That includes some of the most exclusive hotels in the world, from the Beverly Hills Hotel in Los Angeles to Le Maris in Paris and the Dorchester in London. On Wednesday, the new law went into effect despite global opposition, and after online backlash, the hotels deleted their social media accounts. The Dorchester Collection released this statement on Twitter. More companies are changing their policies to be inclusive of employees and customers who identify as gender non-binary, meaning they don't label themselves as a man or a woman. In 2016, Metro Bank in the UK was one of the first companies to lead the charge. It included non-binary as a gender option for customers filling out an application. The bank also added the title MX alongside Mr., Miss, and Mrs. Metro Bank has set the bar for companies like Airlines for America, which represents carriers including American Airlines, JetBlue, and Alaska. Airlines. Starting in June, their customers will have the option to choose unspecified or undisclosed on their ticket so it matches their ID. Several states have already begun offering non-binary options on IDs and other documents. And some workplaces are becoming more inclusive. Mozilla rolled out new guidelines and policies supporting employees who are transitioning to a different gender. It believes employers can play a major role helping employees navigate complicated paperwork and administrative procedures while fostering a welcoming, respectful, and inclusive work environment. Showtime's hit show Billions is breaking ground with the lead non-binary character Taylor Mason played by a non-binary actor, Asia Kate Dillon. We spoke to Asia about why representation is so important in the film industry. Congratulations on the new season. What were your thoughts when you first heard about the character and what is your feeling now? You know, it feels really gratifying and humbling to be playing a character that would have meant so much to me as a young person if someone like that had been on television. And the fact that, you know, Taylor Mason, the character I play, is a fully formed, multi-dimensional person made it all the more exciting for me in terms of of playing them. You know, I think if Taylor had been written as um, like a one-off character and their storyline had been predominantly about their gender identity, I wouldn't have wanted to play the part because it would have made them one-dimensional and it would have made their gender identity precious, which um, I think is counter to the progress that we should be making. Why does care need to be taken when representing people? More often than not, Historically marginalized and historically disenfranchised people have not been in charge of their own narratives. And so what you have are people who are standing on the outside guessing at a life experience. And when you're guessing at a life experience, you are um, possibly, if not more likely, to get it wrong. And that can be really dangerous, particularly when it comes to representation, let's say, of trans women of color who, you know, receive the most backlash, even from progressive movements like um, marriage equality. So talk to me about why pronouns are important and how you've dealt with roadblocks. 
Because sometimes people are ignorant, not intentionally, but they need to be educated and we all need to uh, be respectful. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about why this is so important. And I think when it comes to either a pronoun or a name, let's say, you know, your name is Lionel. How many times am I going to call you Tom <laughs> before you <laughs> say to me, you know what, actually my name is Lionel. And if you continue to call me Tom from this moment on, you are intentionally calling me by something that I don't use as my name. So we're all ignorant of what we're ignorant of until we're not anymore. And I think that when I am misgendered by people who are genuinely slipping up or making a mistake, I can tell the difference between that and when someone is misgendering me on purpose, which does just read as disrespectful. And then, you know, I disengage at that point. Being an actor, is a business. You're managing mm -hmm. your own personal brand and your business. What advice would you have for anyone up and coming and managing their brand and their personal business? One piece of advice that I think is really important is to remember that um, any audition room, if you're an actor that you walk into or any meeting that you take with a producer, a casting director, whomever, yes, you are as the actor being vetted by those people in that room. But you as the actor also get to decide if those are people you want to work with. You get to ask them questions about why they're in the business, why they want to be working on the project that they're working on. These are people that potentially you're going to spend, you know, a month, two months, if not many years working with. And so as an actor, as a performer, you also have the power to say, um, this actually isn't a project that I'm interested in or I'm not interested in working with you. You also have power when you walk into that audition room. Over half of all LGBT workers nationwide hide who they are in the workplace. Taryn Vricchio takes a look at how one chef is encouraging employees to be open and challenge current kitchen culture. This crepe is one of the many Hungarian specialty items on the menu at the Eddy. Jeremy Solomon is in charge of cuisine at the cozy New York restaurant. He's been recognized for showcasing his Hungarian heritage through food. But now Jeremy's known beyond the plate for the ways he's trying to change kitchen culture as an openly gay executive chef. I was never out in other kitchens. I was never openly out. And I didn't think about it. It just didn't seem necessary. But kind of being quiet and you know standing in the corner, uh, you know, you kind of hear all these kind of like nasty things being said about, you know, about, um, about gay people. Um, and homophobia, and it, it slips out. Jeremy's not the only one. 62% of LGBT workers report hearing jokes about lesbian or gay people, while nearly one in 10 LGBT employees have left a job because the environment was unwelcoming. Jeremy admits these types of kitchens have affected the way he's worked. You know, would, have, would definitely keep my head down. I'd be more conscious or aware of how I acted in front of other people, or how quiet I was on a certain day, or how loud I was on a certain day. Or, and that was upsetting internally. Over 80% of non-LGBT people report they feel LGBT employees shouldn't have to hide who they are at work. Yet more than 70% agree that it is unprofessional to talk about sexual orientation or gender identity in the workplace. Jeremy disagrees. He doesn't want chefs to feel like they have to hide who they are in the kitchen. And that's why he pushes to have what he calls an open kitchen. An open kitchen is about being inclusive. And it's about being inclusive of everyone, ethnicity, races, uh, sexuality, but also in terms of mindfulness and accepting that everyone is equal. Everyone might have great ideas uh, and nobody is less than anybody else. Staple dishes from the kitchen include bee tartare with horseradish aioli, confit egg yolk, and homemade potato chips. The Eddy is known for another Hungarian favorite, small circles of fried dough called langosh. Although the menu is largely reflective of Jeremy's background, he encourages the chefs working beside him to add their own influences too. Most other kitchens you probably wouldn't get the opportunity to create a dish or contribute to a dish being a line cook. So here I let my cooks contribute to a component of the dish or sometimes just flat out make a dish. It's, it's teamwork and I want them to feel like they're getting something out of working here that they can bring to other kitchens that might need that. In the U.S., there is no federal law barring employment discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity. 
In fact, workers can be fired in 26 states just for being lesbian, gay, or bisexual. That leaves it up to chefs like Jeremy and other workplace leaders to push for change in their own spaces so that work culture, especially in the kitchen, can change. It's definitely liberating, I would say. I make sure that all my cooks and my sous chefs feel that they can sing and dance metaphorically and literally. It's inclusive, it's an open, it's an open kitchen, you know, and everyone is welcome. There's no, there's no judgment. It's so important to see the chef leading by example and changing the culture. Yeah, and hopefully it becomes prevalent enough that we won't have to tell stories like this because it will just be the way that we do things. Most definitely. Join our Facebook group to keep the conversation going. And we'll see you tomorrow for another episode of Business Insider Today.